wanted to show you a few different things. Um, in JavaScript, to write to the screen, you can use the document.write, which I have here. And inside the parentheses and quotes, you can put in the HTML tags. So I made a heading, welcome to JavaScript, which you can see on my screen on the left-hand side. Now, you can write your script tags inside the head. You can also have script tags inside the body of the page. The script tags is where you would put your JavaScript code. All JavaScript code has to be surrounded by script tags. Um, one thing that JavaScript uses, which is why, which is nice because we already know it very well from CSS, is these IDs. So we, we used IDs a lot in CSS, and we're going to be using them again in JavaScript. So here you can see I have a paragraph and I gave it an ID intro. Now in theory, I can do all these fancy things with CSS. Now that I have an ID, I can make it bigger, make it different color or whatever. But I want to just show you the JavaScript, what I can do with it. So here the paragraph, that's the first one. It says, hello world. You can see my mouse over here, hello world. Now I did text equals to sign the value of document.getElementById intro dot inner html we can access with knowing the id we can use get element by id and that will give us the element and we can access the html the inner html which in this case is hello world so we can access the hello world put it into this variable called txt and then when i do a document dot write txt that's why on the left hand side of which is my screen, you see hello world twice because I'm doing a, I have a document I write, which is the welcome to JavaScript. I have a paragraph, hello world, like we always do in HTML. And then I put in some little bit of JavaScript to show you how I, I'm going to show you different ways you can use this document.get element by ID. Um, so here, knowing the ID, you can put the ID in here and then you can do a few things to it. One thing you can do is, which I'll show you next, is you can modify the inner HTML. The other thing you can do is you can just retrieve it. So I'm retrieving it and I'm storing it into a variable called txt and then I'm writing it. So that's why it is written twice. But really what I wanted to show you is this next thing. Non comment it. What I want to do is I want to I want to assign it a different value. So let's say um, you ask the user, hey, enter your name. A prompt, what is your name? My name is Rachel Adler. Okay, great. And then you store that in a variable and then you can actually modify the contents of your page and include that variable into your page. In this case, I'm just saying document.getElementIDIntro.innerHTML. So I'm assigning the inner HTML with, for the ID intro, for the element with the ID intro, and I'm assigning it to hello students. Hello students. So if we go to this page and refresh it, Reload. And I forgot to save. You see, file, save. Ah, okay. So it does work, which is what I thought. So now it says hello, students. Which one says hello, students? You'll see it's actually the, the first one. The first one is hello, students. Why? Because the first time we had hello world, then we went and we took this hello world and we wrote it again. Then we went and we modified the element with the ID intro, we modified it to say hello students. So it went and dynamically it changed it to hello students. So you can use JavaScript. We're going to be using JavaScript in jQuery too. It's, jQuery is just JavaScript libraries. We're going to be using them to, to change things on our page. You put a mouse over an image, it could turn into another image. You ask someone their name, you can display their name. Um, in, in, in one of the assignments, the Madlib assignment you have, you can do different things with it. You can have, um, you can use document.write to just print out all the results. You can also do something with a get element by ID and change the HTML. You can play around with it. There's, I mean, it's simpler, I guess, to use the document.write, but you can also, once you have the variable, but you can also do something like this and use IDs and put them in placeholders and, and put your variables in placeholders.